Hi guys. Um, yeah, they've been asking me to do this for a long time, and I keep on saying no. <laughs> just no, just and it's just because, you know, like I come to Creative Mornings and I'm like, oh, do I have anything important to say? You know, because I come to Creative Mornings, and I leave with like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go conquer the world now. <laughs> so um, so yeah, I didn't know if I had anything to say, but then um, you know, as you grow up, you you realize maybe I do have something to say and. And then I was just glad one person got a ticket, and then I was like, oh my god, it just, I mean, it sold out, but I, thank you so much for waking up and hearing me talk. Um, so, um, see, where am I pointing this? Am I pointing this anywhere? Oh. So, hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Octavius. I'm a photographer here in Chicago. Um, I've been doing it for about eight years, uh, and um, yeah, uh, five, out of those eight, five out of those eight years, I've been in Chicago, um, and I absolutely love it. Uh, so, um, sorry, I keep on forgetting where I'm pointing this. So, the Creative Morning talk is on the future. Uh, this is the theme of the month. And I was thinking, what does the future mean to me? Uh, so, the future can be fucking scary for a freelancer. And when I say that, you know, you don't know what's, what's going to happen next. You don't know who your next client is. You don't know if that paycheck's actually in the mail when the client says it is. Um, so, that can be scary. But... It can also be beautiful. Sorry. It can also be beautiful. Um, and when I say that is you have freedom. You um, not knowing what your next client is going to be is kind of awesome. And um, yeah, it's really cool. So uh, to talk about the future, I need to talk about the past a little bit, my past. Um, so that's Connecticut. That's where I was born. Um, when I was young, like my mom would always like, I would learn geography. And she would always say, oh, Connecticut looks like an elephant. So that's how I remembered it. <laughs> like, it really looks like a boot. <laughs> Connecticut looks like an elephant. Um, when I was five, this is just a little, little history of me. When I was five, my mom bought me my first Polaroid camera. It was a Mickey Mouse Polaroid camera. It was black and red. It was hot. And um, there was a hurricane, Hurricane Andrew, and a giant oak tree fell in front of my house. And I said, Mom, can I go photograph? She's like, yeah, but just don't drop it in water. I was like, Pfft. Like, I got this, Mom. I'm fine. <laughs> I can handle myself. <laughs> so um, I brought it outside, and I dropped it in water. Uh, and it just spit out the Polaroids. And I remember I could just feel the searing heat on my back of my neck. My mom was like 100 feet away. But um, so that kind of scared me. To not, I don't know. You know, I just never touched the camera again like, for a long time. So. This is a short-lived career in my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, my dad knew it was short-lived when I would um, like only take third base just because it was close to the benches, the bleachers, and I could yell at my parents to get me a big league chew and a hamburger. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and then on top of this, I remember this day because it was the day of the series finale, not season finale, series finale of Full House. And I remember being so mad that my sisters were watching it, and I still have yet to, to watch it or know what happened. <laughs> so, uh, and, but I know it's probably something stupid, like Michelle probably broke her arm, and Uncle Jesse came to her rescue. <laughs> so uh, so it's, uh, it doesn't really matter, but in my head, I want to think like it's this amazing scenario. Um, so that's that. So we're just going to skip to college, because the middle part you don't really need to know about. So um, in college, I majored in design, graphic design, print design. Um, and it was, it was pretty amazing. I didn't know there was like art and computers, and you match them together, and you get graphic design. I had no idea. Um, so uh, with that said, in my third year of my junior year of school, I um, bought my first digital camera. Let's see. <laughs> I bought my first digital camera, and it was a Rebel XT. And the reason I bought my first camera was to differentiate myself from my peers. Um, because at the time, you know, we didn't, 
I didn't, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but you know, iStock photo and royalty free websites didn't really exist. Like iStock was just at the, like I was the only one in the classroom that knew about iStock photo. And the rest of the students in my class were using like Corvus books and just scanning them in and then like taking out the watermark. And I was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, so I bought a camera. And um, I ended up really liking it. I didn't, I didn't, I, like, as you saw, the last time I really touched the camera was like when I was five, you know? It wasn't really like a thing I fell in love with. And then I started to use it more, and, um, and that was in 2005. So that day, I bought, I, like, I bought a Flickr account. And uh, this was the first photo I've ever taken. Uh, and I uploaded it. That was, that was the first, that was like, I was like, this is just shit. Like, this is awesome. Like, I can make something blurry and, you know, and focus on my threadless sticker on the wall. <sighs> the days. So, um, so, <laughs> so it's weird. Flickr's weird, you know, because, um, or in the, the w how we live right now is because now my whole career from 2005 to current day is on the internet. You know what I mean? And that's kind of like surreal in a way. Um, just seeing like you can actually see how you've grown as a photographer or where you are now. Um, so um, this image is also like foretelling of the future. The future. Um, because um, two years later, I started working at Threadless here in Chicago, um, which was amazing. So they hired me right out of college. And um, yeah, I was only there for a little bit. I was only there for a little while um, because soon I realized that I, I, like, I like doing my personal work and um, I wanted to freelance. So in 2007, I went to Threadless. In 2008, I started freelancing. But at the time, um, freelancing, that I decided to freelance, I didn't have any clients in Chicago. I didn't have any clients outside of Chicago. And I didn't want to move back to Connecticut with my parents. So my back was up against the wall and failure was not an option. I, did, I, could, not, I could not move back home after I come to Chicago, because I fell in love with it. Um, so basically what I did was I started creating work. It was like my golden era. I just started making stuff and making stuff. And um, you know, I was, it was more about experimentation. Being a self-taught photographer, um, for me, I have to experiment. Um, you know, I have to catch up to the big boys you know, by myself. I didn't go to school for it. So that's all I did. I just made work. Whatever, whatever came to my head, I just made it, and I put it on the internet. Um, and um, yeah, I started to gather a good amount of work, and it was it was pretty it was pretty awesome. Um, so um, I started to work with series, um, like in series. So basically, um, what I started to do was it, it didn't it didn't happen on purpose, series and sets. But the more I started taking photos, I would ex I would experiment on like a subject. I would just a subject, person, place, or thing, and I would just hone that. I would just constantly see oh, like I'm a very curious boy. So when I'm seeing a, like if I took a block, I want to see what that block looks like, like on the ground, on the ceiling, on its side, if it's blue, if it's red. So um, I like, that's what I like to do. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of projects that maybe some of you have seen before, but um, I'll tell you about my process and how some of them started. So the first series I'm going to show you is Puffin Clouds. Um, this whole series started with my dog tearing up a teddy bear and cotton was everywhere. And I remember grabbing a piece of cotton and saying, oh, this looks like a cloud. Um, and this was that image. So that's all teddy bear remnants. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, this was the first image I really made um, w in the series. It was one of the first conceptual images I really made. Uh, I was working on a 365 project at the time, trying to pump out like images of every day and keeping the caliber really high. So. Um, so this, uh, this series just started to evolve. And, it, and it's mostly me, it's self-portraits, because I didn't have any other models at like, you know, three in the morning when I was doing these. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a little story. Uh, one day, like I was doing this in my parents' house. It was like 2 AM. And I'm like shirtless. And I'm like, like <laughs> posing with clouds. <laughs> And <laughs> my dad walked in, and he, he really didn't know. Like, and this was at the beginning of my career, so he's like, well, "What? Are, what are you doing, Junebug?" My dad calls me Junebug, so he's like, "What are you doing, Junebug?" And I'm like, oh "My dad, I'm <laughs> 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 the timer's on. Leave me alone." 
Um, so, <laughs> so um, and then the next morning, I showed him what I made, and I was like, Dad, this is what I made last night, because I felt like I owed an explanation. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, yeah, he was like, oh, you, that's what you make. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to be a photographer. So, you know, I just make stuff. And my dad was like, oh, cool, you know? Now my dad definitely knows what I do, you know? So, it's cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, it was like very, uh, you know, anything to do with clouds. So, these are dioramas. So, they're about um, seven feet wide and um, maybe four feet tall, and I'm just creating this, this world and this set. So mostly everything, like everything you see in this photo is not photoshopped. Everything is there, and everything's just hanging, and it's wild, so, um, and it's fun. It's fun to make these. Um, actually, this series, or um, something similar to it, you guys might see in Chicago in the next couple of months because I'm doing something with an awesome company. So it'd be really cool just to get back to this series because I haven't done it in a while. Um, my mistress, my baby. Same meal, different day. Uh, this series is, uh, is kind of what, like, uh, I guess people start talking about who I was um, just from this series. Uh, the series is about uh, a hill in Uptown on Montrose Harbor, and I've been documenting it for about uh, five years. I moved there to work uh, when I was working for Threadless. They were in the same neighborhood of Ravenswood. And I moved there to, uh, and I just started discovering my neighborhood, and I found this awesome hill. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just this, uh, it's just this beautiful hill, um, and uh, it's perfect. It's perfect, like curvature. There's nothing behind it, um, and it's um, and it's just beautiful. I just thought, I just thought, you know, it's like my childhood hill, like that I would draw when you were a kid, that shape, and um, I gravitate towards it. So um, I just photographed it throughout the seasons. Like I said, like if I want to see what something looks like in the spring, I want to see what it looks like in the summer. I want to see when there's no people. I want to see there's tons of people. So um, uh, uh, back to that image. Um, this is, if you don't know, this is um, a long exposure of a search helicopter um, that was on the 4th of July. And that's it from the other perspective on the other side of the hill. Um, I, when I was in New York in January, I went to an exhibit by this woman named Ann Hamilton, and she had this amazing exhibit called Event of a Thread. And basically, it was a community of people interacting with one piece of fabric. Uh, and um, I documented, I brought my parents there. My parents had no idea what they were getting themselves into. And I brought them there. And um, I want to show you a little video of uh, me and my parents at this event. So. So that was an uh, amazing event for me to see, just because um, it, was, it was awesome to see someone else also um, seeing how people um, like, uh, interact in, uh, in the community. Um, and it was also interesting, um, so um, you talked about Instagram a little bit. Uh, that was like the first time where I saw um, a little impact that I have uh, with Instagram. Um, you know, the in Instagram thing is so wild. 
um, to have that many people following you. Um, but uh, so many people, I was with my parents, and so many people kept on walking up to me and saying, oh my god, I'm only here because you Instagrammed about it. And I remember my mom, uh, that was my first time my parents seeing anyone really like know who I was randomly. And that was kind of the first time I was experiencing it too. Uh, so my mom kept on backing up and like photographing <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole interaction. Every time I'm like, mom, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it happened like it happened like eight or nine times. Every time my mom's like has a Facebook like a Facebook like um uh, like album dedicated to it. It's wild. Um, uh, so um uh, the book stacks. I collect vintage books. Um, I don't read them. <laughs> I collect them for aesthetic reasons. And uh, either it's like the color of the book or the cover of the book or the contents of the book. Because as a designer, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna scan that in and make a project. But I never do. But um, uh, and it's awesome. So um. Uh, so I started the series where I, it was 9909, and I was like, I want to make a nine out of books. I didn't know if it was even possible. It just was so wild in my head. I was like, that's not possible. You can't do that. But I did it, and that <laughs> <laughs> and there's no glue. It's just it's it's strictly um, just balancing. It's a balancing game, and it was like blocks, and it was awesome to just mess around and like prove that I can make a nine like that's a hard that was like whoa like I like I even look at it now I'm like how did you do that man <laughs> so um so <laughs> and then I wanted to see what else I can make with books so I would make a whale and then um, I made a rainbow in a roommate's room that I really didn't like at the time and he left <laughs> and I was so happy um, and then uh, uh, that room had a bad spirit. I had to uplift spirits in that room. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and then the, the whole book number thing was interesting to me. It, um, you know, st people re resonated with it, and it was that's why I asked you guys what's your favorite number today um, and why, because I love that question, and I would ask people it. Um, so uh, maybe like three weeks ago on Instagram, I said to my like followers like, hey. Guys, what's your favorite number and why? And if you have a good reason, I'll, I'll stack your number. You know, so um, I, I was hoping to get like maybe 20 responses. And like out of those 20, like five would be like, follow me. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> you know, spam. Um, but I got over 700 responses and there, were, there was no spam. I was like, oh no, <laughs> I have to go <laughs> through all these. Like people really love that question and they had some good responses. So I'm gonna show you a couple that I stacked um, and um, so four was one of my favorites. And four says, I never want to come in first, second, or third in anything because they usually get prizes. I don't like, I don't like carrying things, so if I place in anything <laughs> over fourth, I have to carry it. I'm too lazy to carry anything. <laughs> and I was like, oh, at least, you're, at least you're truthful, you know? At least you're <laughs> really truthful. Um, and number one uh, said, I'm partially blind, which means I only see with one eye due to a retinal dis detachment I had when I was a youngin. This still doesn't stop me from being an artist. Um, and this is my, I, like this color combination just drives me wild. I love it. Uh, uh, like I was just playing around, you know, experimenting. I didn't know. Like I, I remember I was like getting orange and my roommate was like, oh, that's going to look ugly. And I'm like, no, I'm like, just experiment. And I was like, and we both fell in love with it. I was like, this is awesome. Uh, but like that is really personal. You know what I mean? That's incredibly personal. And uh, for someone just to say that, and I was just like, oh, wow, that's, that's beautiful. And the next one too. Um, the next one was 49, and in the age my grandfather passed away from a heart attack, and the same age my dad was this summer survived his. Thankful doesn't even come close. So, um, there, you know, there's like a human inequality to um, just like, it's, it's such a random thing, you know, stacking books, you know, it's stacking books into numbers, which is kind of a ridiculous idea. But um, when you uh, attach a humanistic uh, thing that people can um, like relate to, it becomes something beautiful. Um, and I loved it. Um, so uh, there's a series called I Am Here that I recently started. Um, like last month or two months ago, I went on a road trip. And um, I really like photographing giant landscapes with tiny people, tiny miniatures. I don't know, there's just something about like these grand landscapes and just photographing that just like, I just love it. So um, with doing that, sometimes the little, pr the little guy in the photo gets lost. And I wanted to find a way to amplify that person's presence in this space. So I had a design teacher that would also say, if you can't make it big, make it red. Um, and uh, so I love that. I love it was my favorite thing ever. I was like, yeah. So, um, 
so basically, I, I made this red flag. This was the first stop. I was in San Francisco. I went, to a, I went to Chinatown, got some fabric. Thank you, marching band. I know how to make a color guard flag. Uh, and uh, I, just, um, I, just, like, I just started uh, putting people in these large spaces and them screaming back, I am here. You know. Uh, so uh, this was the first one I made. And on the road trip, I made a couple others. This is Cannon Beach, where they filmed the Goonies. Uh, so uh, that's my friend Garrett, and uh, we were standing on this cliff, which we should not be standing on. There's a lot of death-defying uh, things in here. I'm like, oh god, guys. But uh, but it was awesome. You know, it was a beautiful shot, and um, yeah, you know, it, I don't know if you guys are, like like that's uh, Chicago, that's Montrose Harbor. Um, it's just it looks so alien sometimes up there. Like Chicago's a beautiful place. I mean, you guys know that you live here, but. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's ever-changing. It doesn't look, like, sometimes you'll go to the lake, and you're like, how is this even in the Midwest? Um, that, how is that even a lake? It should be an ocean. Um, and all these are my friends, you know? Um, so if you guys find a place that you want to wave a flag, get at me. Uh, it'll be fun. Um, uh, yeah, um, that's the Redwood Forest. We were just walking around, chilling with the big trees. Um, that cliff, we should not be on that cliff. <laughs> <laughs> but we were. <laughs> and um, that's uh, the gorge in, uh, like near Portland. Um, OK. So sometimes I get projects that like, I'm like, oh, you want me to shoot that? OK. Uh, and the only reason I say, oh, is because um, s uh, sometimes I work, uh, get photojournalistic jobs. and. That's when I say, oh, I was just stacking books yesterday. You want me to do that? So, um, which I'm like, have you looked at my work? <laughs> so and it's awesome to get those opportunities where you don't think you would ever get an opportunity to do that, but you do. So I'm going to show you a couple of projects that I randomly did. Um, uh, the first one's for the Wall Street Journal. Um, they had asked me to go down to Indiana and film and photograph um, a hangout in a high school for four days. And this teacher gives out this project called the Remember Project. And the Remember Project, he basically gathers um, veterans from around Indiana, and he gives each of his students a name. And they just have to make like a, a diorama. They have to contact the family. They have to gather photos, gather, gather, basically keep their memory intact so we don't forget. Um, so, you know, it was, at first, it was, it was interesting. You're just in this classroom, and everything's chill. And then you realize, like you have to go to some of these houses with the kids. So you find yourself in a house with a family that their, their son just died in Afghanistan. Everyone's crying. And you're just like, whoa, I just got transported into this world. Now you're in like, like real hardcore photo photojournalistic stuff. Like the writer has been in Afghanistan like 25 times. He's a Pulsar winner. I'm like, how did I get? Like I'm here with my friend Lucy, and she was my sound, my sound girl. Uh, and um, like we were, she's hiding behind a couch. She's not. She's trying not to cry. I'm like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. Like, what is going on? Like, I was just stacking books yesterday. <laughs> like, you know, like you. <laughs> so, uh, so, um, so, you, but, but you, but you're really humbled by this experience. You know, you're getting to do something you, you know, you didn't go to school for. Some people go to school for photojournalism. You know, like I didn't go to school for photography, and I'm working for the Wall Street Journal now for a page one article. Like, wild. Um, but then sometimes, like, like the next week or two weeks after, I had to go back to Indiana, and I was photographing this. <laughs> this is dream project. So uh, <laughs> I got to work for Wired Magazine, which is my favorite magazine ever. And they sent me down to Indiana to photograph cows eating sprinkles. <laughs> um, <laughs> the email just said, um, hey, you want to work for Wired and photograph cows eating sprinkles? Question mark. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, so I went back down to Indiana in like Amish, Amish country. And um, yeah, we just filmed cows eating sprinkles. Uh, it, so let me tell I should tell you why first of all. <laughs> so um, uh, in the Midwest, there was a drought and, um, last year. And there was not a surplus of corn. So um, farmers had to find any way to get the corn nutrients into the, the cow's diets. So um, anything with corn syrup, whether it be cookies, gummy bears, sprinkles, you can feed a cow. To get the corn nutrients 
from those, those, uh, those ingredients. Um, and, um, but the cows have four stomachs, so they break it down and they don't get the sugars, they just get the corn nutrients. Who knew? Um, so uh, Farmer John was like, why are you taking sprinkles? And I was like, Farmer John, I need to photograph these. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> like, look at them. <laughs> like, you walk into a sprinkle barn and it's just like sprinkles everywhere. Like, it's like a children's book. It really was. It was a children's story. And um, I, I loved everything. I loved everything about it. Um, it was so much fun. Um, okay. <laughs> so, uh, sometimes you get more ridiculous things that you have to do, but you I, can you photograph a turkey on a phone? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, <laughs> and this was the day before Thanksgiving, and I'm randomly in New York hanging with friends, and I got asked uh, for, by Bloomberg uh, Business Week uh, to uh, photograph a turkey on a phone. And I was like, where am I going to get a turkey, guys? It's the day before Thanksgiving. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But they found a way. They found a way. We found a turkey. And um, my friend, thank you, Michael, for holding a turkey. That was so heavy. Um, and it was basically, the article was basically on, um, uh, what was it on? It was on uh, Butterball Hotline, the Butterball Hotline, um, and uh, people calling in. But, um, but yeah, it was really interesting. So I like jobs like that. Like, I give me crazy. Like, give me wild. Like, give me, like, a... Like a like a not impossible feat, but just give me something, something to say. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Uh, so, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, that's not, that's the end of my whatever. But, um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 My whole thing is all about. My whole thing is all about just just experimenting and creating. Uh, I didn't show a lot of my commercial work um, because a lot of my personal work gets me those commercial jobs. Um, like I, I read something about myself one day, and someone said, Paul makes these series, um, and he puts them out into the world. He releases them, puts them out into the world, and it turns into a marketing, like a marketing, a way of his marketing. And I was like, oh, yeah, huh, that's interesting. I never thought of it like that, because I wasn't thinking about it like that. It's not mar to me, it was like, oh, let me just see what I can make, and let me share it with the world. And, um, and then I started reaping the benefits um, of doing something I just loved. And I, 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 that was the best decision I could have made. So even now, I'm just always creating. And uh, whether it's, um, you know, Instagram is a whole, it's a, it's a thing of showing, I don't know, Instagram's just wild, you know, like, um, now it's, it's becoming its own industry in a way. Now I get hired to go on these jobs just to um, either show the world, show, totally show the world through my eyes. Um, with a certain company, like for instance, I got a chance to go to um, uh, iHeartRadio Music Festival and um, document three days of it um, in the pit. And the interesting thing about documenting, uh, one, you're documenting with your phone, which my dad doesn't understand that, um, how someone's paying me <laughs> to photograph with my phone. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm like, it's my eye, dad, it's my eye. They like it. <laughs> um, I was like, all right. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, so you know, you know, usually I don't know if there's any photographers, concert photographers. You see uh, photographers in a pit, and they're just like fighting for like, you know, I want that shot. So the cool thing about iHeartRadio Festival, there was only three photographers. They were um, the company that was sponsoring it um, owned those photographers, and it was just me at this big like 300 foot stage. So and I got to stay there for every song, which if you know, once again, photographers are in a pit. They only stay for like two or three songs, and then they're out. So, you know, I am like, I am like down in the pit. Like, this is when I was like, this is wild. I'm down in the pit and Mary J. Blige is on stage. And you're like, okay, that's wild. And then she's like, I'm Prince. And then Prince comes on the stage. You're like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's like five feet away from you. And it's just you and Prince. Like, you are just you and Prince. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, and then uh, I got yelled at by Usher. You know what I mean? Like, that was a highlight. Like, um... <laughs> Like there was like that was like oh my god just from Instagram this is awesome, so um, yeah so you know like the industry is changing and I'm and I'm changing with it you know I'm just conforming and I'm just having fun and like whenever new technology comes out whether it's an app or a new phone or a new camera I always try to experiment with it because you don't want to be left behind you know what I mean like um, my dad just bought an iPad it's his first like his first thing he's ever really bought a technology te technological wise and. Um, he doesn't even have an email. 
My dad has a phone and no email. Um, and uh, in last or two days ago, he told me and my, my I was on the phone. I was FaceTiming him and my mom, and he's like, "I think I want an iPad." And I was like, "Oh, finally! You know, you, that's I wanted. Like, I I couldn't force it on him. I wanted him to say he wanted it. You know, because because if you force something upon someone, they're gonna be like, oh, it's gonna be like in their, you know, uh, wherever. It's just gonna be on on your dresser, and you're not gonna use it gathering dust. So um, for me, it's always just experimenting with different things and just playing around and uh, just making it work and have fun. So yeah, thank you.